Hey everybody, this is Tori and today I'm going to be taking you on a bookshelf tour, uh, part one. Okay, so like I said, we're going to go on a bookshelf tour today. Uh, this is the best way I can show you the full bookshelf because of my editing software. I'm really not familiar enough with it to know how to do it differently. Part one is the shelf and let's just get started with the top. Okay, so this is the first shelf I'm going to talk to you about. Um, every shelf kind of has a theme in my own head, but I don't really know if it makes sense. So this is my children's-ish themed shelf. This is kind of where my kids' books are. So the first series that I have on this shelf is the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants series. And it consists of the all five books that I own. I have not read this one, Sisterhood Everlasting, yet, uh, but I have read the other four. And then right next to that is The Land of Stories by Chris Colfer. And then next to his book is the full series of Unfortunate Event series by Lemony Snicket. So that's the first shelf. The second shelf is kind of like a series shelf slash catch-all for Harry Potter um, slash Harry Potter plus what I could fit on the shelf with it. And so that's what this shelf is. The first part, as you can probably guess, is the Hunger Games. You could probably see that from the zoomed out view. And then Divergent, I am reading Insurgent right now, but I just rented it from the library because I'd like to have them all on paperback and it is not released in paperback yet. So uh, just have Divergent. And then we kind of get into the Harry Potter section of the shelf. There it is. Um, the left two books on the left hand side are just kind of reference materials that don't really have anything to do with the series. It wasn't written by Rowling. It's just um, two reference guides, Harry History and the Lexicon. And then I have the paperback set of the Harry Potter series. And then I have on the very right, Tales of Beetle the Bard. And the last two books on my shelf are just the other two books that were written by J.K. Rowling. Uh, the Cuckoo's Calling, which was written by her alias Robert Gal Galbraith. And then J.K. Rowling's The Casual Vacancy. I have not read either one of these yet, but it, they're definitely on my list. All the other books on the list I have read and um, absolutely loved so far. So that's shelf two. Okay, so this is shelf three. It is my vampire novels shelf slash um the entire Stephanie Meyer collection shelf. So that's what this shelf is about. The first series in this shelf is the Blue Blood series by Melissa De La Cruz. I have not read these. I only bought them for their covers and because I wanted to read them. So it's not been read yet, but I'm getting there. The next series on this shelf is actually missing. It goes right here. It is the Vampire Academy novels by Rochelle Mead. So they're out with a friend right now. I don't have them, but that's where they go. And then these three books go right next to them because they are the spinoff of the Vampire Academy series. It's the Bloodline series, and I actually enjoyed these books better than the Vampire Academy novels, but I wouldn't have unless I read Vampire Academy first. So this is the first three of five. The fourth one's not in paperback release yet, and the fifth one is not released yet at all. It'll be out in July. So really excited to read those. Love this one the most. The last series on the shelf, you can't really have a vampire cat or a vampire shelf without Twilight, at least you wouldn't be able to in my circle of friends or my world because most of us got started with the vampire genre by reading Twilight. Um, we were those teeny bopper high school girls. So that was us lined up for midnight releases of the movie. I mean, it was kind of bad, but at the same time, I kind of do respect the Twilight genre for what it did and um, how many people got to reading because of it. And I really enjoyed them when I read them. So I have all four of those as well as The Short Secret Life of Brie Tanner. And the last book on the shelf completes Stephanie Meyer's works with the host. That is the shelf. Shelf four is another kind of just catch-all shelf. It's one that doesn't really make a lot of sense together, but they're kind of like the same genre. 
So the first four novels on this shelf are the Dan Brown, Robert Langdon novels. Um, I have read the first three of these and not read Inferno yet, but I really did enjoy these novels. I know they get a lot of criticism and controversy just based on the content. And also I've heard a lot lately about it's just not entertaining anymore for some readers, but I've yet to experience that. And I'm excited to start Inferno sometime soon. I say soon with all of these, but who knows when it'll happen. Then next to that is just the anthology of Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales. And next to that, it's really small, but it's right here. It's uh, Madeline Engel's A Wrinkle in Time. I read that in high school and loved it, and I found it for $2, so I had to buy it. And the next one to that is just a standalone. Well, I think it's part of a series now, but it's the first of a series that the second book's not been written yet, I don't believe. It's called Guilt um, by Catherine Longshore and it deals with like Anne Boleyn era and kind of fiction around surrounding that time and kind of just takes the storyline of that era so I really enjoy learning about Anne Boleyn I think she's fascinating so I'm excited to start that of course I've not read it yet I've not read a lot of books on this shelf Next to that is his Dark Materials trilogy by Philip Pullman. I once again haven't read that or really any I've not read any books from like Guilt on on the rest of the shelf but I do have the Philip Pullman Golden Compass trilogy or his Dark Materials and I like these I had to get them for a class but then I dropped the class but I still really liked the cover they were like a special edition so they all kind of have that and it's just really interesting so I like those a lot oh it's not gonna work there we go okay so next is the like Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel. Yes, I had to look at that because I never know if it's Secrets of the Immortal or the Immortal Secrets of or who knows. But these are written by Michael Scott. My brother actually gave these novels to me or he gave me like the first four that he owned and then I went ahead and bought the last two because he really liked them but didn't have a lot of room for them on his shelves and he knew I would take care of them and he knew I liked, I would like them. So I just went ahead and added them to my collection and I'm really excited excited to start reading those. I've been really excited to start reading those, but I just found other things to read first and really want to marathon this series. So that might be something I do this summer. That is shelf four. Okay. So finally we have shelf five and it's like the emptiest shelf on this big shelf, but it's really about the only free space there is on either of my bookshelves because I'm just running out of room. So this shelf is kind of paranormal, I think would be the correct genre. I don't really know specifically what genre they lie in and it depends on who you talk to, but they all kind of deal with like paranormally type things slash fairies slash fairy tales. Let's just talk about them. The first three I want to talk about are uh, Beastly, A Kiss in Time, and Cloaked. These are all written by Alex Flynn and they're really good books. They're just really fun novels. They are like modern day twists on fairy tales, but kind of in not a darker way, but just they're not your like your typical the princess goes away with the prince. So they're just kind of different and they're just kind of edgy and I really, really liked those books. Um, they're just absolutely fantastic. Do not judge like Beastly the book on Beastly the movie if you didn't like Beastly the movie because the book is a lot better in my opinion. It goes into a lot more detail of course and it just tells a better job. It does a better job of telling the story I think. So I enjoyed Beastly the movie but not as much in the book. So if you didn't enjoy the movie please give the book a chance. Like don't judge the book by the movie cover. Sure we'll go with that. The next three novels, and like I said, I kind of apologize on the zooming out of this. I'm still working with software, but these three novels right here um, are the next three, and they're the Trill Trilogy uh, by Amanda Hawking, and it's Switch, Torn, and Ascend. The reason I bought those were for the covers as well. They're pretty awesome. I mean, I just really, really like those covers, but I've not read them yet. Shocker, I know. The next series on the shelf is the Wicked Lovely series. This consists of five books by Melissa Marr, and those are the five. And this is about fairies and kind of different fairy sectors and segments um, in the city and kind of how they hide amongst the humans. And so it's pretty neat. It's kind of similar to um, City of Angels and like that series, or City of Bones, City of Angels, City of Lost Souls, all of those. It's really similar to that series as far as like how they keep themselves hidden and how it's like a different 
secret club type thing that you can't really tell anybody about because of protection. So it's pretty similar to that, um, but it's about fairies and it's it was really interesting. I've not read all five. I kind of started to read those when I was finishing college in my last year and I had three part-time jobs and was trying to graduate. So I only got halfway through the series. I only got halfway through Fragile Eternity, but I will finish those soon. The last series I want to talk about on this shelf is the Hollows series. It's a trilogy, and it's those last three. And you can't even really see the hidden back there. I guess that's accurately titled then. Let's see. You can kind of see it better, but it consists of the Hollow, the Haunted, and the Hidden. And I've not read these yet either. Like I said, a lot on this first shelf, like part one of the tour, is a lot of what I've not read. And part two is more of what I have read. But this kind of deals with The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. And I can't even tell you how excited I am for those books. So that's the last shelf. So there you have it on the bookshelf tour. I'll go through one more time on just the shelves specifically. So there they all are. So that concludes my bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed this bookshelf tour. And for my fun fact about Tori for the bookshelf tour videos, I thought I would tell you for each bigger shelf, like which book is my favorite on the shelf that I have read and which book on each shelf I am most looking forward to. The first bookshelf tour for this video, uh, the book that I am most excited to read on the shelf that I have not yet is The Land of Stories, The Wishing Spell by Chris Colfer. I have heard nothing but good things about this book. I'm really interested to read the story. I love Chris Colfer on Glee and on Twitter and just in general, I love Chris Colfer. So I'm really, really excited to read this one. Uh, there is a second one and he's writing a third one. So I'm just really excited to get going on this one. My favorite book on this shelf, just individual book, is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. It is the seventh book in the Harry Potter series. This series is my favorite series of all time. If I had to pick like five books to die with or five books I could only read the rest of my life, this book would be on the list. I love this book. I love this series. I cried. I couldn't, like at the end of it, I didn't want it to be over. So I put it down and just cried for like a week. And then I finally picked it back up and finished it. Um, it's excellent. And it's my favorite Harry Potter books. So um, those are it. This is my favorite. And this is the one I'm most excited to read. So that's all for today. I hope you really enjoyed my bookshelf tour. And I'll have part two up soon. Thanks for watching.